hello welcome to today's video so today's video is a follow-on from my previous video uploaded and it's going to be the first in my batch cooking series so at the moment i'm going to be batch cooking all week making tons and tons of really affordable delicious nutritious meals for our freezer i'm personally doing it because um, i'm nine months pregnant ready to pop and we need some like really nice delicious easy grab easy grab go-to style meals in the freezer but this is for anyone you don't have to be pregnant you can just want to follow along with some of these meal inspiration ideas um, it saves you a lot of money and this is all going to be making a lot of food so it's going to be over the next two or three videos of batch cooking otherwise it'll get way too long but today I'm essentially just going to do a voiceover and show you as I go along what we're making, what's going in what. So I really hope you enjoy today's batch cooking video. Make sure you are subscribed because there will be a few more of this style of video on the channel. And um, yeah, let's just go straight into it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you how to make is our chili con carne. This is Lawrence's recipe. I'm going to be making actually quite a lot basically um, because half of this mixture is going to be chili con carne. The other half will be made into enchiladas. So same thing, just different like addings to it. So you're going to need three tins of red kidney beans, four onions, a whole garlic clove. You're going to need herbs and spices of your choice. I go with smoked paprika, chili flakes, and salt pepper, obviously. Smoked salt I'm using today. And I'm also using two and a half pounds of minced organic beef from the butchers. You're going to need some soy sauce, balsamic vinegar to give it like a really rich flavor, two tins of chopped tomatoes, and beef stock, and a little bit of sugar. <clears throat> so let's get into it so the first thing you want to do is turn your um, slow cooker on you don't have to slow cook this um, you can do it in a saucepan but we leave it overnight before freezing it because it just gets the richest flavor it's so delicious so start with chopping up all of your onions fry the onion and minced beef together because you want to brown everything you can't brown things in a slow cooker um, and also add your garlic Crushing garlic is actually a lot harder than it <laughs> looks. I wish I'd kind of cut it up now. But anyway, once that's completely browned, um, you want to add the onion, garlic, and the mince to your slow cooker. Give your red kidney beans a good wash and then add those. I know it looks like a lot of kidney beans, but we are massive fans in this house and they're also really good for you and they really fill out this um, meal and make it a lot bigger than it already was. So after adding your meat, your onions, things like that, add your tinned chopped tomatoes. And then you're going to mix it all together, make sure it's fully stirred in. Obviously while it's sitting in the slow cooker, it's gonna like all combine perfectly. And add quite a lot of smoked paprika if that's your thing. That gives it a really nice smoky flavor. And also, strangely, I crumble a couple of beef stock cubes inside the chilli. You don't need to mix it with water first. We're going to be adding some um, hot water later in the process, but just sprinkle it in. Give it all a stir, salt, pepper, and then a little bit of sugar. And that actually brings out the depthness in the flavour. It doesn't actually make it sweet. And then once that's all mixed, we actually leave that overnight in the slow cooker on low. You don't have to do this, you can leave it on high for about six hours and then whether you do it overnight on low or during the day on high, let it cool down completely. And then I actually separated that meat into four large freezer bags, labelled it and put it in the freezer, ready for when baby's here and we fancy some enchiladas or some chilli and tortilla chips. Okay, home 
homemade burgers has to be the easiest thing in the whole world they taste so much better than shop bought and you know where the meat comes from so i always recommend if you're making beef burgers um if you like beef burgers to make them so all you're going to need is some burger mints well beef mints sorry some parchment a little bit of olive oil and you this is optional but a burger press is actually really really handy um and then yeah just we used about two and a half pounds worth of beef mints that we bought from the butchers again and that actually makes around nine burgers so that's going to make nine separate meals which is incredible because obviously we don't have burgers all the time but um they're just a great treat dinner aren't they so the first thing i do is just um oil up the burger press so the meat slides out easily put the meat in press the burger down and as you press the burgers down put them on the parchment paper once you've got all of your burgers cut it all up and a little tip i would freeze the burgers without putting them in the bag just a little bit first so they harden up and don't go all squishy and then you can take them out the freezer put them in the bags label them up and then put them back in the freezer and um yeah just save when you want to eat some burgers So the next thing we're making after I hydrate myself is um, this gorgeous dish, lime and garlic chicken. This is something you actually serve with just not normal white rice and some limes on the side. You can actually also serve this with pita bread. So first thing you're going to need is some limes, obviously. I actually use a whole bag of limes from Aldi, so really affordable. You also need some salt and pepper, uh, a bag of coriander or cilantro, and you need some liam parents, and you need some garlic. You can add fresh chilli on the day you actually serve this up. You also need about four to five big heaped tablespoons of melted butter and you need a bit of olive oil so the first thing oh and don't forget your chicken thighs um so i'm going to be making this into three different freezer bags so the first thing you do is separate your chicken into the freezer bags i've gone with um four four and five with the chicken thighs that i bought from aldi label them up it's really important to label any chicken dishes up because they don't last forever to be honest um, this dish will actually last about three months in the freezer. Once the chickens are in the bag, this is by the way one of the easiest but most rewarding um, pre-made batch cooking type thing you can make. There's no cooking involved until the day you serve it up, which is great. So chop up all of your limes and juice them in a little juicer. Juicing's actually pretty hard i don't know if it's because i'm pregnant and i've got that carpal tunnel thing <laughs> in my wrists but i found it really difficult um wash the coriander this coriander was so near its last legs so i'm glad i got it all used and put in the freezer but chop the coriander up and also grate the lime skin off of at least half of the halved limes and just leave that aside then separate all the lime juice that you squeezed previously into each bag of the chickens evenly um i just do it bit by bit and then kind of measure it out by eye but you want a good glug in there to be honest and a whole bag of limes did actually make quite a lot of lime juice it just smelt divine in there and then put a few pinches of the lime zest in each of the bags just to make it extra limey limey that's a weird word <laughs> and do the same with coriander just separate it into the three bags next thing you want to do is add some garlic you can add like crushed up garlic or sliced garlic it's up to you i went with garlic powder because i was feeling super duper lazy i wanted to do this really quick and i added quite a lot of garlic powder especially in that bag <laughs> and then i topped it all off with the melted salted butter which i spread evenly in each of the bag and then in each bag you want a good squash a squash a good glug of worcester sauce this gives it like a nice rich flavor loads of pepper and then the fun bit close the bag up and smush it all around so once you've evenly coated the chicken thighs 
in their little bags you don't want to put it straight in the freezer because you do want it to actually marinate for quite a while so i put these three bags in the fridge for the rest of the day and then just before i went to bed that evening i put them in the freezer and now they're waiting but yeah that's going to make at least six meals you serve it with rice and a bit of coriander on the day um it's just delicious and just so worth it <laughs> Okay, so this is our chicken leek and mushroom pie filling. On the day of serving, obviously you get some pastry, um, but you don't need to make the pastry pie today. You can just do the filling, which is so easy. So the first thing you want to do is grab a couple of bags of leeks from Aldi. This resulted in about seven leeks, which is a great number because you want it like super duper full of veggies and delicious, especially I'm gonna really need the strength after giving birth to a baby and you know Lawrence and I will be up all night with the newborn baby. So you want a whole punnet of mushrooms, three medium to large white onions and you want five-ish large chicken breasts, a pot of double cream, lots of pepper, bit of salt and some chicken stock. So the first thing I actually do is chop up the leeks with my little sous chef there. He was definitely trying to get a bit too involved. <laughs> Then remove the stalks of the mushrooms, chop those up as well and give them a little rinse under the tap. Um, you do want the whole punnet of mushrooms at least, to be honest I could have put more mushrooms in this dish. Um, if you don't like mushrooms you can leave it out and maybe add something else. Lawrence used to add ham into his pie but you know uh, I'm making it and I don't add ham. <laughs> um, and then you cut up chicken like an absolute awkward turtle like I'm doing or you could just cut it up normally but I can't touch raw chicken it makes me sick so I have to do it with a knife and fork um but yeah so chop up all of your chicken dice it up and then you want to fry everything you don't need the slow cooker for this dish you can just get a really big wok or something start by frying um the chicken just making sure it's all fried on the outside and to be honest fully cooked basically um oh gosh that raw chicken life is not for me <laughs> Give that a good um, stir in the saucepan and then um, after that's been frying for a little while you want to add all of your veggies together, fry those until they really soften down. Um, what's great is the, the wok definitely looked way too full at the beginning but leeks um, and onions to be honest when they soften they, they, they reduce a little bit. They also um, add a gorgeous flavour into the dish and oh, add some butter because butter makes everything better in life doesn't it? So add some butter to that, give it a good stir, keep reducing it down. Now because I didn't have space I actually um, fried the mushrooms separately in a separate saucepan. And um, oh yes you're going to need a bit of plain flour about two heaped tablespoons and you're going to put that over the fried veggies and chicken now the reason for this is because when you add your stock and other bits and bobs and there's a lot of liquid in there the liquid turns quite thick and more into like a jus like a sauce which is great and you don't get those lumps of flour in the um, water residue which is a really really good way of just naturally thickening up a sauce Add about a litre of chicken stock. I add two chicken stock cubes to this water and make sure you get all the flavour in there. Um, so let that reduce for a while to be honest. Um, add a whole load of black pepper. If you don't like pepper you obviously don't have to but honestly it makes it so delicious and obviously add a few pinches of salt. Let that reduce for ages. I forgot to show you but I added the mushrooms in there like an hour after. Thank you. 
this is it when it had cooled down for about an hour so it was still fairly warm but it wasn't hot at all and this is where we can add our cream just to make it super duper healthy <laughs> um but this is double cream that you add to the pie mixture and um it's really delicious so add about three quarters of a like a medium tub um that's from aldi that tub and stir it completely in add it nice and slowly and don't add it when it's too hot because it might curdle but once you've stirred that in i normally go in with much more pepper as well just because the cream will soften the flavor and you want to keep that richness in the flavor the mushrooms put like a really gorgeous flavor into this pie mixture anyway lawrence obviously has to have a little taste test every five minutes <laughs> Um, but he said it was like one of the best flavours ever. He really, really can't wait till we have this chicken pie. I actually separate this pie mixture into two freezer bags. It's going to make two large chicken, mushroom and leek pies, which is really exciting. And each pie will serve at least three adult portions. And um, we serve it with like some green beans on the side, occasionally some mash. But yeah, it's a really delicious pie. I recommend you try it. I'm definitely going to be thankful for uh, my past pregnancy self when the baby's here and we've got all this delicious food in the freezer. So yeah, stay tuned because I've got more batch cooking videos um, coming soon. I've been batch cooking non-stop recently. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. I love you guys so much and I'll see you again really, really soon.